One of the biggest talking points about the Steam Deck was the different storage configurations. You had the 64GB eMMC model, the 256GB and 512GB SSD models as well, each at different price points. Now the question was, on a low power device like this, does the storage speed have much of an effect on the game loading and also the gameplay performance? So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Specifically, I want to answer two key questions that you might have when it comes to choosing the right Steam Deck model for you. Number one, how does the eMMC storage compare to the SSD storage? And number two, how does the micro SD expansion storage compare to the SSD storage? And to do this, I've tested nine games on a variety of storage formats from SSDs to micro SD cards to hard disk drives. And I'm looking forward to sharing with you guys the results. Okay, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And we have a Discord server, so come along and join us there. And I'll leave a link in the description below. Okay, I'm sure you've all memorized the specs by now, so I'll just run through it real quick. The Steam Deck comes in three configurations, 64GB eMMC at $399, 256GB at $529, and 512GB at $649. The eMMC uses PCIe Gen 2 one lane. This allows up to 500 megabytes per second of read and write bandwidth. Though when it comes to eMMC, the current standard according to Windows Central is version 5.1a and it has a transfer speed of up to 400 megabytes per second. The specs also say that the 512 gigabyte model is a high speed NVMe SSD, though it doesn't say how fast. Both are using PCIe Gen 3 four lanes. In this chart here, you can see Crucial P5 SSD is running at 3500 megabytes per second read speed, and that is much faster than the Crucial P1 or P2 at 2000 megabytes per second and 2400 megabytes per second respectively. So I'll assume that the 256 gigabyte model is running the slower SSD. For this video, I've tested five different storage options that I had available to me, and I put the Crystal Mark Info up on the screen, which shows the read and write speeds of the drive. The first is an ADATA SX8200 1TB SSD with a read speed of 3500 megabytes per second, and Crystal Mark Info shows it doesn't quite get there, but it is still pretty fast. This is going to be very similar to the 512GB Steam Deck. Now, I don't have an SSD that is around 2000 megabytes per second that would match the 256 gigabyte Steam Deck, but as you'll soon see in the results, the SATA SSD at 550 megabytes per second has very similar loading times to the faster SSD, so it doesn't really matter that much. Next, I have a Western Digital 1TB Blue SATA SSD with a read speed of 550 megabytes per second. I also tested two hard disk drives, a Western Digital 3TB Blue SATA hard disk drive with a read speed of 150 megabytes per second, and a Seagate Backup Plus 2TB external hard disk drive with a read speed of about 120 megabytes per second. I included these just to show how slow loading can actually get. Finally, I'm also testing a SanDisk Ultra 256GB micro SD card with a read speed of about 100 megabytes per second. I think a lot of people will also be using the micro SD card slot to play games as well, especially people getting the 64GB eMMC model. Now you could also use a USB drive to play games as well, but I only had a Sanders 64GB USB drive which didn't fit a lot of the games that I'm testing, so I decided to just leave it out of testing, but the devices here should give you a good idea what to expect if you use a USB drive. I'll just quickly throw up my PC specs, but obviously the PC I'm testing on is superior to the Steam Deck, so my PC is not a good match for the Steam Deck, however I think most of the bottlenecks should be removed, and you will see loading time differences between storage devices. My methodology for testing storage was as follows. First, I would reboot the PC to clean out data in the system RAM and video RAM, then I would time how long it would take to load the game from Windows to the main menu, and then also from the load menu to the actual gameplay. I used the stopwatch on my iPhone to record the times. Next, I exited the game and redid the test. This was to record the time again, now that much of the game was actually in the system RAM and video RAM, and you'll see in the results that games load much quicker if you jump straight back in. So just to make sure the data could be repeatedly attained, I did both these tests at least twice and averaged this, and sometimes a third time if there was a discrepancy. 
Okay, here are the results for the nine games that I tested. Call of Duty World War II is actually pretty interesting. It is much faster on the SSD, particularly on the fastest SSD available. If you're a Call of Duty fan, I would consider getting the SSD model. You'll be loading in twice as fast compared to having it on micro SD. Cyberpunk 2077 is an interesting game in terms of loading. There's barely any difference between the storage devices. Prior to the game being released, the developers announced that an SSD was recommended for the game. It's possible there are other areas of the game where the SSD may reduce loading times, but loading up into the city area, there was not much difference. Dirt Rally 2 is 100GB in size and the biggest game on this list. If you played Dirt Rally, you should consider the SSD models of Steam Deck as there's a clear difference here, particularly the 512GB version as it's a pretty large game. From the biggest to the smallest size game, I wanted to test Europa Universalist 4 to see how smaller games fared. The micro SD card actually does decently here, while it's slower, it's only 20 seconds slower, taking 1 minute 20. It's possible that the micro SD has faster loading times than hard disk drives because it has faster random read speeds, though it's hard to be completely sure about this. Surely everyone has a copy of Grand Theft Auto 5, so I'm guessing many people will install this onto the Steam Deck. Because it's so big and loading times are similar across the different storage devices, you should consider installing this on a micro SD card. Metro Exodus was one game I knew that took ages to load off a hard disk, and here you can see it takes more than 2 minutes to load up the hard disk to get into the game. The simple fix is to install it to the micro SD card and your load times will decrease significantly. Pillars of Eternity is an older, less demanding game from last generation, and SSDs help improve load times here. On eMMC storage, I'd expect load times of about 30 seconds, and that seems pretty reasonable to me. Resident Evil Village is a game that loads much faster on SSDs than hard disk drives and micro SD storage. With eMMC storage, I'd expect load times of around 50 seconds, though the game would take up half of that 64GB of storage space. Finally, Yakuza Kiwami 2, which is a game from my favorite series, but a game I think is useful to test out, given the developer reuses the same Dragon Engine, City, and assets in many of their games. Again, no surprises here, SSDs perform much better, though it seems to fare okay on a micro SD card. To round things off, I averaged the loading times across 9 games to see the difference between the storage options. As you can see, there's not much difference between the NVMe SSD at 3500MB per second and SATA SSDs at 550MB per second. That tells me there's other bottlenecks when it comes to reading data. This might also have to do with the fact that SSDs are designed differently to hard disk drives. In Mark Cerny's PlayStation 5 hardware reveal, Mark Cerny noted that seek times on SSDs are instantaneous, but on hard disk drives, it can take time to seek data across the drive because the disk needs to spin to find the information. This may be why micro SD cards have a similar read speed to hard disk drives, but they perform much faster. Finally, even though we did not test out eMMC storage, I interpolated an average time, and my guess is that eMMC storage on Steam Deck will be approximately 25% slower given the testing. Okay, a quick word on gameplay performance. I covered this topic on a theoretical level in my previous video talking about eMMC versus SSD, and I'll leave a link below for that video. The short answer is that the game is loaded into the system memory and the game is played from there. Games from last generation were all made with hard disk drives in mind, so most have enough data for 30 seconds of playtime before you run out of textures and game information. Gameplay performance should, in theory, be identical across all storage devices, as most games still are designed around a hard disk as a baseline. There may be games in the future that require a SSD, but it's probably likely that you'll need a stronger device than the Steam Deck to play those games anyway. Okay, to wrap up, let's answer the questions I had in the introduction. So the first question was, how does the eMMC storage compare to the SSD storage? So despite not actually having the eMMC storage to test, I'd estimate that based on the tests here, that the performance of the eMMC storage is going to sit somewhere in between the SATA SSD and the micro SD card. So it's going to be roughly about 25% slower than those other two Steam Deck models. And if that's okay for you, if that doesn't bother you, then go ahead and get that eMMC storage. The problem, I think, is that the storage size is pretty small. So at 64 gigabytes, you're not going to be able to put very many large games on. 
And so you're going to be end up using the micro SD card slot and it's going to be 50% slower instead. So I think choosing the right Steam Deck model is just as much about the storage size as it is about the loading times. If you play older, less demanding games, yeah, I think the EMMC storage is fine. But if you play something like Dirt Rally 2, for example, which is over 100 gigabytes, then sure, you could do that on the EMMC storage or the 256 gigabyte model. But I think you're better off just going with that 512 gigabyte model instead. So the second question was, how does the micro SD expansion storage compare to the SSD storage? And I think if you look at those test results, I think the micro SD card performance isn't too bad. Yes, it's 50% slower than the SATA SSD and the NVMe SSD, but it's still beating out the hard disk drive in many of those test results. And I think if you look at the top end Steam Deck model at 512 gigabyte storage size, I don't think that's very much storage size anyways for PC gamers. So I think most people are gonna to have to buy a micro SD card at some stage and put their games on there. And so if you look at it from that perspective, I think the EMMC storage model is still a pretty reasonable deal, especially when it costs $250 less. So I think that the SSD and the loading times are a little bit of a bonus. Okay, that's gonna be it for this one. Make sure to check out my other Steam Deck videos. I'll leave links in the description below. And as always, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one.